Hello family, friends, and fans. Welcome back to Karma Lately. I know it's been a minute. I'm here with you guys today and I want to try a DIY uh, for your home actually. I know usually I have um, fun little dollhouse DIYs, but we're going to do a DIY for a toaster. And this is the toaster that we're working with and I want to make a cover for this toaster. So, um, I took the measurements and, um, the toaster is 12 inches wide. Sorry, it's a little tricky to write on this. Is it the 12 inches wide? Seven, <clears throat> seven, in, seven and a half inches tall or high. However you want, however you understand it is fine. You can write it that way. And eight inches deep. And we're going to go over what that means when you look at it. So 12 inches going across here seven and a half inches going across here and the depth from this point to this point and I guess we'll do like a little swoop <laughs> here is eight inches so that's what we mean by depth how deep it goes across here so <clears throat> those are the measurements that I'm working with and now we're going to look at the materials that we're going to be using um, I have looked at a couple of DIYs. Now, one of the thing that I one of the things that I tend to do when I'm looking at others' um, work, other people's work, is I try to take the basic principles of how to make something work or how to make something, and then I either experiment with my own thing or um, just add and create, embellish, uh, find new ways to make it my own so that I'm not actually stealing their idea, I am building from it. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna get right into our materials. Now this um, used to be a skirt. <laughs> I've used this for so many different things, dollhouse clothes, shoes, um, dollhouse shoes um, and that kind of stuff but I kind of want this to be the base uh, the front and the back of the toaster and so I have to I'm gonna measure it out so that um, since it's seven and a half inches tall and 12 wide I'm going to try to make it Perfect. I'd like to add at least half an inch on both sides. Um, or, or maybe even a little more than that on both sides. So that would give us, um, instead of the 12, I would do either 13 or 14 wide and, or 13 and a half wide maybe. And then for the height we remember we said the toaster was seven and a half inches i'm gonna do eight or eight and a half inches of material for the height and now for the depth i'm gonna take actually i'm gonna take a pillowcase i like this color a lot i've always liked this color and i just i love upcycling 
and I can go to the fabric store, but number one, I save money. Number two, it's fun to see what you can make out of something basic. This is your basic pillowcase, and we're gonna turn it into something else. So for the picture, for the top portion of the cover, I want to use one long piece in, instead of doing like a side, a side, and a top. I kind of want the whole side and top to be one long piece. And that's what I'm going to use this for. Um, so I'm going to cut this accordingly, according to the measurements. And remember, so what I'm trying to do, measure your toaster and then add, depending on how much bigger you want the um, cover to be, I think I'm going to add an inch and a half on all sides for all the fabrics, just to make it, you know. Now, I've got this sturdy piece of cardboard, and I got this idea from my sewing machine cover. So realistically, I'm trying to practically recreate my sewing machine cover. This is what I'm talking about. My sewing machine cover has a very hard piece in the front and a hard piece in the back. And then the fabric is loose with no, no, um, nothing hard. It's just fabric. So I want to do that. I don't know if I'll make a pocket. Maybe if I'm having a good time, I will. But <laughs> for now, so this, if you see, if you, you hear that, it can stay by itself. It stays standing by itself because it has this hard piece. And it's really a plastic, but I ran out of plastic. And so what I'm doing... Let me take all this stuff out of the way. I'm using this. It kind of has that same feel and it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to also measure the fabric, I'm um, sorry, the, the cardboard. I'll probably measure it about the same, or maybe a little tiny bit less than um, the fabric, just because I want the fabric to kind of snuggle over it when I'm sewing. And um, so we're gonna be using this. So, um, see, so that's, I'm already starting to find my own way, my own little toaster cover. Um, and that's, that's what I want. I like this. These used to be leggings of mine and um, they're so pretty. Uh, I love the pattern. So I'm gonna try to, um, uh, sew this into the front somehow as a decorative piece as well. And you'll see how all of these are going to come together. Now this, I'm not supposed to be using because I'm, I have this saved for another project. However, however, I'm not going to be using the shiny part. I don't know if you can see, this is not a real, this is not fabric. This is more like plastic. And it feels very similar to this material on the sewing machine cover. It's like this plasticky kind of thing, like something you would use for a table cover. And I'm going to be using this as the inner, um, as the inner lining to the toaster. So this is what's going to touch the toaster on the inside part. Um, and I prefer this over fabric um, to do that. Also because this is easy, a lot easier to clean. And you could just wipe this down and no worries, no troubles. So in essence, if you're going to do a classic toaster oven, what I've learned is that you're going to need three separate... Um, 
you're going to need three separate fabric pieces. You're going to need your outer lining or top lining, whichever one. They both are going to require the same. You're going to also need batting. Now I have three different kinds of batting because I ran out. And then you'll also need the inner lining. Now let's talk about the batting because the batting is also very important. Um, okay, so the batting, this one is kind of thick. You don't really need it to be this thick, but I'm, I ran out of my batting with all my dollhouse projects. So I'm using this. This is supposed to be like air conditioner um, filter or something. I'm not really sure, but I saw it in the 99 cent store and I was like, yeah, I'm going to need that. Um, so I think I'll be using this, this one since it's long for the top part. And then I'm going to... <laughs> Oddly enough, don't laugh, I'm going to be using felt as my batting. Um, and I think it's a nice thickness. So I'll be using the felt for the front and back parts of the um, toaster. So this and that in the back. And if there's any parts of the toaster that are missing batting, I'll be trying to use it I'll be economizing it so that if I need to scrap it and use bits and pieces here and there, I can do that. And then you will need pins. Now I keep my pins here and I also made a little pin watch. So it just makes it easier I've seen a lot of these online and I say, you know, let me make a quick one, which I have to make a new one because this one's like, I've really abused this one. Um, but you just, you're sewing and you're like, pull, do, pull, you know, and it's just a lot faster and you, um, you keep it. And then some people attach magnets to this and then they just keep them there. It's, you know, whether you want to just pin it in or you want to attach a magnet to it, it's fine but I find this to be very convenient. And um, for now, that's all I'm gonna really share. The, I've got two scissors. I've got my fabric scissors and I've got my paper scissors and we're gonna get into it. Another thing that I did fail to mention, and I'm sorry that there's a whole humongous mess of everything I've just like dumped everything on you guys here okay um the other thing that I wanted to mention is your pattern paper now why do you want pattern paper well because yeah you can eyeball it but um, why don't you have a pattern in case you decide you want to do this as a gift to someone else? You never know if, you, if it comes out well, then you'll already have your pattern. And then all you have to do is make adjustments according to people's, um, according to, to the person's toaster, you know, like, so we're going to be using this pattern paper and, um, this we used here in the house for like we were painting until we were covering the floor but this is perfect the perfect thickness for a pattern paper so I'm gonna go ahead and do the pattern for uh, the design that I want for my specific cover and I will get back to you shortly All right. 
well even though these two cardboard pieces are not in the best of conditions um, this is the one for the front and this is the one for the back and um, we're going to be covering this with the fabric and I'm just going to be putting this in between some of the lining um, of the fabric. So the inner lining, the plasticky table cover like will be in the inner part. And then um, I'll put the batting on top and the fabric on top of the batting. And I'm excited. I hope I don't break the needle on my sewing machine. Yay! I'm actually gonna take these two pieces, put these together, and then put the batting. You know, I don't think I'm gonna put batting in the front and the back. Yeah, I don't need it. Um, I'm not putting batting in the front and the back. That's how I was confused. And then um, going to stitch this on. And I am going to have to do a, a binding along the edges so that it's not so raw once I get the sewing machine. So I have extra batting for this, so I'll be fine. And the front and the back doesn't need batting. Forgot about that. Okay, wish me luck. We have our um, three parts here, our uh, <clears throat> cotton, um, the felt, which we're making believe is our batting, and this tablecloth fabric thing, which we're going to be using as our inner lining. I'm going to do this. I'm going to roll this whole thing in place. Rolling, rolling, rolling. And I'm only gonna sew this part. I'm gonna sew it one way and then <clears throat> uh, maybe space it out two inches and then sew again. I'm gonna see how it comes out. If not, then I'll have to take out the manual and bring out the quilting foot, which I'm not ready for. All right, <clears throat> so I've selected a little swirly now remember I'm using the XR3340 from Brother and I'm using sewing stitch number 28 which is a <clears throat> like a watery line or like a like a squiggly line. Let's see how this goes. Actually um And I'm not going to take it all the way to the end. And I'm just going to, hmm, can I backstitch in this one? Let's see. No. So, um, I just want to do a quick back stitch and come down <clears throat> go back to 28 
I like this stitch. It looks like actual quilting, even though it's not. <laughs> um, I just want to make sure everything is aligned um, in the right way. Because I don't want it to go wrong here. Now, I, this is how it's coming out. I don't know if you can see that. Almost looks like a zigzag, but it's like a water, like a water, like a softer curve. And so I just started going along down this side, which I didn't plan to do, but I'm going to continue it all the way down the length. But then I'm going to go back and do about two inches in between each down this way. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. So now I rolled it up again. And, and now I'm going to do stitching down these sides. Um, stitching, you know, you know what I mean across and I think I'm more confident with this particular stitch and I'm doing it along the line because since it's a pillowcase it has that line so I kind of want to go over that line a little bit <clears throat> if I can um, and I'm gonna raise the speed and Let's get this going. So this is how it came out not bad I wanted to have that like quilting effect I did not use the quilting uh, presser foot but I um, did these uh, this uh, stitching design I love the fact that I can combine these two um, different materials, the fabric with the cardboard. I love that I can use them and combine them together. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna tuck this side underneath. <clears throat> Just a nice, neat situation here. Might have taken that corner a little too liberally and it might cause a little bubble in this area here but... tucking it underneath and like this. it might still be a bubble but and i like this fabric because it's nice and stretchy Back it up. 
So here it is. It caught, it caught mostly on the back. Mostly. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we were working with exact fact. So this is our gusset. That's the middle part of the toaster cover. <clears throat> we're going to find the middle of it. We're going to find the middle part of this. So we're going to fold this in half. pin right in the middle so now I know where my middle is right here it's my pin so now um, and I'm gonna do the same thing actually for the bottom part Find both middles. Okay, so now both of my middle parts are marked. <clears throat> and this is this part here. It's going to get sewn on the machine, just this top layer here. Okay, so now that we have this out, I took this ruffle, um, it's like a bed ruffle, and I cut it, and what I want to do is, I'm just going to, I can't sew, I don't want to sew it, I'm just going to glue it on and wrap it around. And this is from my mom, she likes ruffles, so I feel like, so I'll probably cover the center. Or maybe I'll just, yeah, I'll drop it down here and cut it, and then I'm going to wrap it all the way around the entire thing. This is what we end up with. It's that kind of a situation. I'm going to get closer in, but I just want to show you how it looks on the actual toaster, which is right behind here. <laughs> I was hiding the toaster. Here it is. The big reveal. The famous sunbeam toaster. And... It's nice. Look how smooth and snugly it just comes on and it's sturdy, so it's not loose. It's nice and, and, and sturdy. It could have been a little bit wider um, along the, the depth. It could have been a little wider, but um, I'm quite happy with it. This, you could just push it out. What I love is this middle part here, the gusset. I love how the gusset turned out. It just, it just looks so, it looks like a real quilting job and I'm kind of proud, I'm really proud of myself with this. It's, um, 
it's my first time attempting something like this and it's a little rough around the edges but you know what it adds so much character and personality to the living room it's um you know you're gonna create something for your um how you like it and your preferences and um at the same time that it protects your toaster it also has adds a nice quality and i chose this color also because my mom's walls are like a very light 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 uh mint green and so this will play there's a little bit of green in here the light lighter green in here and the dark green i feel like all these greens will play off on the wall and um mesh really well so that's it if you guys decide to upcycle remember all of the things that i used here even including the ribbon this was the skirt this is the pillowcase um this the this is a strip from my leggings this is uh, a ruffle for your bed which i was gonna put in my room but i really decided that i preferred it um I prefer to use it since it already has such a perfect ruffle and even this ribbon all of these items all of these fabrics and materials are from here I did not purchase anything I just wanted to do a real upcycle uh, project and I love doing things like that but you are more than welcome to buy whatever you want to buy please share your videos of yours this is my first time doing this so forgive me if i missed any steps or if i did things backwards or wrong um, and if you want to give me tips please do since i am a beginner as well but i am sharing the journey of me learning exploring experimenting and having a great time sewing on this brother machine <laughs> all right well it was a pleasure you guys please like subscribe and thank you so much for watching